because like I go to Tom's. Have you been to Tom's? Tom. Tom's. Oh yeah. It's like they have a real production staff. Yeah. There's all these people running around with clipboards, and it's like. I went to Bert's house the other day. He had eight people behind computers, yeah, just typing away. What the f they're doing? Emailing oh, what? Hey guys, welcome back. I've got another quick turnaround video for you because I wanted to make a few comments on the whole Brendan Schaub situation, so this won't be one of my longer videos. I've been working on my Sober October video in the background, which is looking likely to drop this weekend, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that one. It's going to be a big video with plenty of analysis and breakdowns of the Joe Rogan universe and how it's slowly starting to crumble. And interestingly enough, there might actually be some cross crossover with this video as well now that I think about it because if you haven't heard Brendan has decided to pull back on a whole bunch of his commitments including stand-up comedy. Now this is a pretty sensitive issue for him and his family so I don't want to disrespect him or his wife and kids in any way so I think the best thing to do is just to show you what he said publicly that way he can speak for himself. You guys know I never attack anyone's family or personal lives and to be honest that stuff doesn't really interest me anyway but Brendan Brendan's newborn daughter has been going through a rough time. However, luckily, it looks like she's going to be okay. Yeah, back in studio, had a health scare with the baby girl. If you guys saw my social media, she went in for emergency surgery. Um, she has trouble breathing, and she's been in and out of the hospital, like I explained on my uh, Instagram post. So, yeah, she had to have emergency surgery, so... Uh, it kind of put a halt to everything going on. Uh, family first there. And um, she's doing all right. She has a fight ahead of her, but she's doing all right. And she is a little fighter. So uh, God willing, I think she's going to be okay. But, yeah, it's been, it's been tough at the Shab household. 2024 has been kicking me in the nuts. It's the way it goes. Um, just how it goes, man. That's life. Yeah, so that's obviously good news that she's going to be okay. I haven't been following any of this. I actually only just found out about it in the last couple of days because I don't follow Brendan's social media or anything like that, and I haven't really been keeping up to speed with his podcast because of all the JRE and YMH content that I've been covering. So I thought I'd get that out of the way up front to give you guys some context as to the background for Brendan's decision making. But like all big life decisions, it's not always just one event or one thing that triggers a change. It's usually a combination of factors that come together, causing you to reevaluate where you're at and to make whatever changes you think are in order. And so after that update, he addressed a lot of the support from social media and just people in general. And I always find it weird when Brendan talks about social media because he has this bitterness about him that he can't seem to drop. Like he can't just say thanks for the support. It means a lot. He always has to throw in a comment or two about all the hate that he gets. And I get it. He cops an unusual amount of hate. I don't want to kick a man while he's down by any means. That's not what I'm getting at. But you'll see what I mean later on when I show you his comments about how he gave advice to MMA journalist John Anik, who was considering quitting after copying a backlash from Sean Strickland's fans. I want you guys to know, like, all the support online, I see it. I see it. And, you know, I have a weird relationship with uh, social media and that stuff. You know, a lot of negativity, uh, not just with me, but with anyone. But um, just part of the game. Um, so, you know, I lost, lost all faith in social media years ago but uh the amount of support i got with my daughter in the surgery it's given me more hope so um i realized that you know for me i see it on the ground so i'll meet people in the in the go oh you get a lot of hate yep no doubt i get a ton of hate um i get a ton of love too but the people that do support me aren't the loudest on the internet um but they came out for my baby girl and um you know, so I deal with real life interactions on the street, um, events, stuff like that on tour. So, you know, that those those good people are out there and they, they came out in droves. Um, even people that hate me came out in droves to show support. So it means a lot. So then after he said his thank yous for all the support, he went on to explain that he's pulling back on some of his commitments, particularly his stand-up comedy tours around the world and the US as well. So let's see what he said, and then I'll break it down straight after. Um, yeah, I had to cancel Austin and Nashville. Uh, and usually I hate doing that stuff. Um, it happens. But uh, yeah, I, th I think this time I just don't care. 
that's where I'm at. I I got I got to be home more. I'm gonna pull back from touring so much, and I just got to be home, man. I got to. I can't miss Tigers games. Can't miss my bossy growing up, uh, baby girl. Uh, just I can't do it anymore. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I'm f- tired. Yeah, you know, I've been hustling for over twelve years now. Not that I'm gonna stop doing the pods, but as far as the the plane life and stuff like that, I got I gotta chill out. I can do spots in L.A. I can do local, SoCal, NorCal, but going international or you know going across the the United States ain't happening right now. So I'm gonna take a break from that and just focus on family and uh, do my thing, man. Do my thing. So yeah, let's get into it. Enough of that. Enough of that. Okay. First of all, like I said before, I'm not here to bash Brendan today. I think that this is honestly a very good decision. Just quietly though, I didn't know that he toured internationally. Seriously, that's news to me. And you remember earlier how I mentioned it's not usually just one thing in particular that triggers this kind of decision. It's usually a confluence of things that lead you in that direction. So even though I'm sure he's feeling exhausted and just wants to spend time with his family after everything they've been through, which is understandable, this is a good financial decision. We know that he's always cancelling shows due to poor ticket sales. People are always posting about that. And so when you're exhausted and there's a lot going on at home, it makes sense to stop doing the things that don't add up financially. And this isn't just an issue for Brendan, the same thing is happening for Tom Segura at YMH Studios. We saw at the turn of the new year, Tom announced that Dr. Drew's podcast won't be continuing, and I called this at the end of 2023, that we're going to see more of those kinds of cancellations over the course of this year and next year. So, Brendan sticking to a local touring schedule makes sense financially, as well as just from a lifestyle perspective. I mean, think about it. If he was selling out arenas and stadiums and had venues constantly calling him, offering him the stage, it would be a much harder decision to make to pull back on all of that. And still, to this day, Joe Rogan won't let him do a set at the Comedy Mothership in Austin, but I'll talk more about that in a moment because Rogan has a lot to answer for in all of this, but there was also all of that drama a couple of weeks ago when the intern that Brendan offered a job to had to be let go for financial reasons, and if you look at the numbers on his podcasts, well, they basically tell the whole story. His views are tanking, which means the ad revenue is drying up. I mean, for a podcast with over 2,000 uploads that's been going since 2016, to be sitting around the 50 to 60k view mark per episode when he's a regular on JRE, I can't tell you how bad that is. And I know he's got staff to pay and all those studio overheads as well. Even YMH is feeling the heat. None of these Brogan comedy podcasters are still growing. They've all plateaued and begun their declines. And even though YMH is still making decent money, you've got to consider how many mouths that Tom has to feed. Because, like, I go to Tom's. Have you been to Tom's? Tom's? Oh, yeah. It's like they have a real production staff yeah there's all these people running around with clipboards and it's like i went to bert's house the other day he had eight people behind computers yeah just typing away what the f- they're doing emailing oh, what social media yeah. going crazy promoting arena shows everyone's going nuts me no i don't want that in my life why would you don't need it? I don't want it. You have a white guy. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you need it? You're just Jamie, some average well, white guy. Not no offense, but you're not, you know. With all due respect, Jamie does take the place of like <laughs> at least two regular people, if not yeah. three. So when you add up all the talent that Tom has to pay to push out all those podcasts and in addition, all the production staff and the marketing and the social media people, he's got to cut in his agent and his manager, and then the IRS is breathing down your neck. You know, you're burning through millions of dollars every month. Don't get me wrong, Tom's doing fine and he's living the life and all of that, but these cuts are coming quick now, otherwise he's going to find himself trading in his Porsche 911 GT3 for a box of washcloths. Oof, imagine that. Somebody might have to give him the mindset talk. But as for Brendan, well, I don't think he ever got there. So what I mean is, I don't think he ever built up his comedy career to the point where he could justify having a whole bunch of people carrying clipboards and promoting his shows and selling tickets for him. In fact, he even mentioned just yesterday that he's managing his own social media again and reading all of the comments. So when John Anik, you know, says stuff uh, about Duplessis and Strickland. Or anyone, yeah. Uh, really, du- really, it's the Strickland stuff. So that fan base comes for you. That fa- that fan base would come for you. Mm. It's very toxic. It's never been worse than right now because now it's just the way 
social media is, they're sides. Either you like this guy or you hate him. And the ones who hate him are going to be way louder than the ones who like him. Trust me, I know. I talked to Anik. Talk to Anik about it. Anik's the best. I told him, I said, dude, you, what you're doing is you're succumbing to the minority. The majority of people absolutely love, love you. him. You're yeah. making a decision based off the minority. Now, the minority is very loud. They have nothing better to do. They want to be loud on social media. 99.99% of people that you walk by absolutely adore you. You're going to make a decision to leave the game based off the minority. He's like, you're right, bro. I'm like, uh, you're talking to a guy who deals with a ton of hate for doing free podcasts and stand-up. So trust me, nobody gets it more than me. You can't let the minority win. Yeah, He can't um, walk away. It, no, dude, if he walked away, that would suck so bad. Dude. He won't. He's just going through it. Yeah, he, Maybe he said he was in an emotional state yeah. at that time. And it, 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 it gets you going. So what he does, though, like you, I know you stopped reading comments and stuff, but John. Anich, I do now. Oh, you do now? I, yeah, I'm back running all my stuff now. Well, there you go. That's Learned awesome. my lesson. But John said, like, a lot of people are, like, unattainable, but he wants to be the guy that kind of, like, talks to the fans and stuff. But then you better after have he does it. If, you better have to think exactly. if you're going to do that, especially right after a fight. Because remember, especially in America, after that fight ends, the majority of Americans are on Strickland's side. So if you say something against Strickland, they're going to come for you, dude. Wow, imagine taking social media advice from Brendan Schaub. But it sounded to me like he was blaming his previous social media manager for his bad public image, but I think it was also a financial decision as well. Like I keep saying, multiple factors are at play here, and overall to me, it seems like he's making all of the right decisions. Brendan doesn't have a big enough public profile to have a social media manager and to be touring around the world doing stand-up comedy. What he's doing now is exactly where he should have started out instead of dropping a special straight away and trying to walk with the big boys. That's what screwed him over early on and he's never recovered from it. I mean, the bottom line is, I've said this before, Brendan has no business being behind a mic in any way, shape or form. He's just not media trained and he doesn't speak properly. He's constantly fumbling idioms and sayings and he does all of this with the confidence of a politician. However, Having said that, if he insists on sticking to a public career, he should definitely be pulling back on the comedy commitments and sticking to a more local intimate setting where he can work on his material and grow, if that's even possible. And just think about how much money he'll save. This way he can focus more on his podcast, getting the views up, and not spending so much time flogging a dead horse. And seriously, I just can't get over the fact that Rogan won't have him at the mothership. He's the one who basically held Bupper's hand and welcomed him to the stand-up community, but 10 years later refuses to give him a spot at his own comedy club. That is just wild. And I even wonder if Joe recently had to talk to him and gave him the good advice to cut back and just lay low, spend time with family and just go from there. If you ask me what he should be doing, I think he should have opened up a chain of gyms and maybe a supplement company or something like that and used his connections in the MMA community and Rogan to plug it and get it rolling around the country. That's something he could have been successful at, or just becoming a personal trainer or something like that. His first wrong move was to rush into the stand-up comedy scene with all of that arrogance and look down on everyone else as if they were haters, when the reality was he was simply not cut out for that life. So while it might seem like I'm trashing him, I honestly think this is a great move for him. Hopefully he lets what's left of his comedy career sit on the back burner and open a new, less public chapter of his life that doesn't involve speaking into a microphone or being in front of a camera. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. I'll continue this conversation with you guys in my Sober October video coming this weekend, where I'll take a closer look at Rogan's relationship with Tom and Bert and how cracks are starting to appear. So, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you jump on board. That way you'll get all my uploads right there in your feed. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Dana White hates me. <laughs> For no reason. I did nothing, dude. How dare you? For those of you that don't know, he called me a f***ing dummy. And I'm 39 years old. I can't just lay down like, you're right. Like, you can't do that, dude. It's not nice. Why would you get so upset? If my theory on UFC 279 is so outlandish, why so mad, bro?